Welcome back to Today Rocket Science. I'm Adam Balkin. We're going to take a bit of a break from nature and the actual world here and instead introduce you to some girls who are helping to mold and create the virtual world. My avatar has blue spiky hair that is probably a foot tall. Erin Keplish says nothing is too outrageous in the virtual video gaming world she's creating. Well, right now, I just built a volcano thing that I was going to live in, and it also has like a house and I'm making a pool. She's one of two dozen teenage Girl Scouts taking part in a science, technology, engineering and mathematics or STEM program at the New York Hall of Science. The girls are learning how to make programming codes and use special software to create 3D video games. I just feel like it's a great opportunity to not just at like at pursue my passions, but to meet fellow peers and sisters that um, that have the same passion as I do. I want to prove to myself that I could be able to be in that little field of computer technology. The workshop is part of the Girl Scouts Leadership Institute, which aims to give scouts real-world entrepreneurial and leadership experience. Organizers say the Ford's Day program provides a safe and encouraging environment where the girls can learn. They get to work with other girls. They aren't. They don't have that intimidation of, of working with other men or boys in their classrooms. And Lundgren says it's important to introduce girls to STEM programs at an early age. We found that you know girls, if they're not hitting that that um, if they're not getting that experience at an earlier age, that they're not they're being intimidated by it. Keplish says there's nothing to be intimidated about. She hopes more girls look into STEM careers. Instead of women having these preconceived ideas of what they're supposed to do, I think that STEM is just a great place for them to be because it's, it's innovative. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Tamani Woolley. Now to a woman all those Girl Scouts can look up to, a woman who's taken that coding and turned it into something you literally have to see to believe. This might not look like anything to us, but to her, it's an immersive virtual experience. It allows you to interact with this life-size vehicle in, in this space. We have this ability to uh, interact with the vehicle and use tools. Elizabeth Barron is a virtual reality engineer for Ford Motor Company. Her work allows her and other Ford engineers to experience the complete reality of a car without ever having to actually build it. We are capable of evaluating everything inside and outside. So we sit in every position that a customer could sit and we evaluate the car for what we call crafted quality. So we inspect every little detail and every interface and how it interacts with every other little interface. This method of car design not only saves time but valuable production dollars. We're taking months off our product development process. We're catching things really early so we're saving a lot of money that way so when you find things really early you haven't spent engineering resources you haven't built physical models elizabeth says there's a number of fields of science that go into this technology we use uh, visualization technology so we're actually getting into lighting so we have to understand the physics of light and then we need to understand a lot about mechanical engineering, so the, the uh, swings and hinges and mechanisms and how things work. So how do you know if this feels for you? Computer science is awesome. And if you have a mind for that, a field like this is for you because you really can get, you can go anywhere with this type of technology. A chance to build a world of your own? Now that sounds like a dream job. For it ain't rocket science, I'm Shazia Khan. All right, now from technology that's amazing to see to technology that's amazing because it sees, sees you. I think it was really cool how they would connect to each other and follow each other. I thought the robots are cool. Uh, I like that they can line up in a straight line. Students gathered at the Museum of Math in New York City for a special sneak peek at the robotic prototypes behind an upcoming exhibit. They also got a lesson in how the robots work from someone who builds and programs them. My whole professional career has been built, has been largely the story of building better toys. And robots really are the pinnacle of things that are fun. The robots communicate with each other through their own Bluetooth network. Professor McGlurkin says by using that communication network to move information, they can do things as a group faster and more safely than people can do it. Everything from exploring Mars to search and rescue operations right here on Earth. You want them to be able to interact with the world, to be able to do something useful, to be able to affect the world. The professor's strategy for facing those challenges? Well, beyond science, it's the need to... All embrace 
the nerdiest, dorkiest, geekiest stuff and recognize that this is really cool. I really like tonight and it made me a lot more interested in robots. A one in a lifetime experience. The Museum of Math's full robotics exhibit opens early next year. And in North Carolina, one group of engineering enthusiasts is getting a feel for what could turn into a fun future job. It's not your average summer camp. I want to be an engineer, but I think this kind of helps in the sense that you're kind of getting a tiny feel of what it's like to go off on your own. Davidson County Community College's third annual STEM camp kicked off with a bang. You can just come and you can have fun while still learning. You can uh, build stuff. You can think about new ideas have a lot of creativity. More than 94 through 8th graders are divided into groups of three for hands-on projects and solving real-world scientific problems that teach everything from teamwork and responsibility to principles in science, math, and technology. So they have to learn to work together. They have to take turns so that they all teach skills and they can teach each other. Students are learning to program robots using Lego Mindstorm kits. They're also testing out some engineering design techniques to build bridges out of styrofoam and balsa wood. First you have to construct the robot and build it, which takes a while. And uh, you have to be really good with electronics and not get mad. Coaches say it's crucial to play off kids' creativity with camps like this now to get them interested in STEM for the future. The whole idea of this program is to keep them excited so that when they get up to high school and can actually start really applying it and really making plans that, that we don't lose them because that's where all the jobs are going to be. And some are already doing just that. I wanted to go to a community college to begin with, not sure which one, and then transfer to MIT and I've thought about the Naval Academy or the Air Force. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Elise Michelanis. All right, we do have to stop here for one more quick break then coming up. It's all about H2O as we head back to River Raisin National Battlefield Park and check in with the students there who are learning about how to keep their local waterways healthy and introduce you to these dedicated high schoolers who are squaring off against college teams in an aquatic robot competition. And we go from the Great Lakes to even greater depths We'll hear from three of the world's most respected ocean explorers and their unbridled love for the sea. To find more hands-on science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your community, visit connectamillionminds.com during the break.